So going back to um, home shirking, it's emerged from new LinkedIn data that over a third of employees would quit their jobs if they were forced to work in the office full time. Whereas it seems to me that working in the office full time is having a job. That's what people have signed up to do. Um, interestingly, I think it found that younger people were keener to be on the office, in the office, and it's people of my age who probably have quite comfortable living arrangements who are keener to shirk. But no doubt there are legitimate reasons for hybrid working. There may be people who have particular conditions that mean they have to do this, but not for quite so many people. It seems to me it's one of the many disastrous lockdown legacies which we're still yet to eliminate. As I see it, people who aren't going into the office have semi-detached themselves from their employer already. Well, Vox Populi Vox Day, we ask you the people, if they would quit their jobs if forced to work from the office full time, and the people of Birmingham have spoken. I would go there, honestly. I would do it. Um, because working from home is really depressing, in my opinion, because you've not got like, your workers to speak to if you've got a question to ask, for example. I'm quite lucky to work in a really nice place. I have really good colleagues, and the people I interact with on a daily basis are good, and it's fulfilling. So I personally wouldn't in my current role. I think it's a good idea for them to go back because, you know, because inflation's gone up and everything's expensive, so I think it's quite better that people can, you know, start going back to work. It depends on the job. Uh, some jobs are good, some jobs are bad. And if it's a good job, brilliant. You've got a nice working environment. Well, um, ju just showed the point that the younger people seem to be keen on getting into work. So thank you to the people who answered for us. But I'm now joined by my great panel, the former editor of The Sun, Kelvin McKenzie, and Labour MP, Lloyd Russell Moyle. Um, come on, Kelvin. Do you think they're shirking or are they working very hard at home and I'm, I being unfair? I think you're probably being unfair, but I think more importantly, I'm afraid the train has left the station on this argument. Oh, it's not, you, it's on strike. And well, yeah, it, should, it won't leave the train to the station tomorrow, you're quite <laughs> right. And didn't if you were in the underground today, you're quite right. And on Saturday. Thanks very much, RMT. Um, yes, the game's up. Um, companies actually don't want you to come in either now because they can downscale the size of their offices. It saves them a hell of a lot of money. And I do agree with you. It, it stops uh, h how you train a younger person in some of the skills of the office is difficult. But the main reason is this. Most of those jobs now are between 25 and 40,000 pounds. People have no actual connection with their place of work. And they're looking constantly to go to other jobs between 25 and 40,000 pounds, whichever one will offer them the most amount of freedom for their uh, for their life outside work. It's a quite interesting change. And unless we break that down, unless we break that down, I'm afraid you're going to see more homeworking. And you're also going to see a total detachment from industry to industry. So at one stage, oh, I'm an expert in plastics, I'm an expert in brewery or something, only because you've done it for 35 or 40 years. You knew everything. Now somebody who is doing accounts one place can actually get another 1500 two grand somewhere else and can actually spend an extra day at home. And the other people behind it are the bosses. Why? Because it's the bosses who have the bigger houses that can have the offices and they suddenly discover that they don't need to leave at six and get home at eight, as they thought. They actually, they see their kids. They quite like taking them to school. They actually quite like the wife. There are a lot of change going on at the same time. But Lloyd, we've got a productivity problem in this country. We've had one now for 30 years. If people are working at home, doesn't it seem less likely that we're going to solve the productivity problem? Well, we know, don't we, that countries that have more flexible working or shorter working weeks have higher productivity, and countries that have extremely long working weeks have generally lower productivity. Now, not necessarily a strict correlation, um, there are some outliers, but broadly that is, the, um, that is the pattern. And so I don't think it is clear that having being in the workplace and the office means that you are less or more productive. What I do think is workplace culture. We have, a, we have had in Britain, I think, a culture where in the workplace you not only work but you socialise. And a lot of time in the office is actually spent socialising in the office. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people have realised, well, I could have better quality socialisation 
in my community and then I can go into the office and work intensively better, not have to socialise with people in my office but socialise with people in my street. And I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that but we do then need to change some of the ways that we work. So for example, do you want someone eating their lunch just at home, never leaving their house for two or three days at a time? Or do we want to create systems where you can work from local hubs, a local cafe, so you still meet people but, and interact with people? Can I bring people? you back to the productivity point? Because mm -hmm. I'm finding that my constituents are not getting good service from DVLA, HMRC, mm -hmm. the passport office has got a bit better, Office of Public Guardian. Now, all these bodies are working from home. Is that sheer coincidence or do you think it's correlated? Well, I think that there is some coincidence around it because we have seen a breakdown in public services, in the resources to public services. We've had massive cuts to um, national and local government means that they just have less staff. And even if they're in the office, they're not able to provide their services. The However, passport office has taken on more people. Um, uh, DVLA has been recruiting people. The Office of Public Guardian has been taking on more people. Well, and, and in the DVLA and the passport office, we have much higher demand. Passport office for both a backlog of COVID, um, but also in terms of the changing Brexit arrangements. All of those things have changed. You know, the, the need for young children to have passports nowadays. When you and I were children, we were just added to well, our that's parents. a long time ago. Uh, added no, to no, our no, parents' no, We're not passports. that old, but still, that um, changed you know, a you know, long time but, ago. But, you know, there, there, there's a general changing pattern. But I do think there is a case that you say is right, which is that in my local council... Um, so I don't think it's national government so much matters, but where you have face-to-face -face services, yeah. where they have been taken away, where they have been shut, the counters have been shut, and, you, and same with the police sometimes, and you're mm. told, ring a, ring a telephone, and someone will assist you later on. There, I think people have yeah. seen a reduction in service, and so it is not as simple as saying everyone has that can work from home and everyone can't. There are some jobs that will allow it and there are some jobs that won't. And I think what you'll see is the jobs that don't allow working from home will have to start paying a decent I, amount I, I, more. I and the agree. jobs that You're... do allow working from home will actually I, be less... Uh, less I totally less agree. Forced. Police officers, police officers I'm are not going to work from home. F a fire, uh, the fire workers not going to work from home. They're going to want more money. I absolutely mm -hmm. guarantee it. I'll tell you something else that's happened. You take my local council, Elmbridge Council in... in in Isha, very wealthy area, right? You could fire a cannon there every single day and never hit an employee, right? Basically, local, local government are, quotes, working from home, unquotes. It's incredible. And, for instance, I know a case, in fact, it's down in, I think it's down in the Sussex Health Service, where they hired a finance director. The finance director lives in but, Yorkshire but and only the, comes in one day a week. But are people getting the service? Because... I get lots of complaints in my constituency from people applying for planning permission who get no answer, who it takes months for, because there's nobody in the office, there's no one they can talk to. Now, it, it, it is true. You would have thought with this system you would get to somebody more quickly, actually. With the phone, perhaps not. With that, no. What has happened is that people can be lazy. Why? Why? Because there isn't a boss glowering okay. or asking or having the Monday morning meeting. It is true. Actually, it sounds a bit old fashioned. This. It is true. You can Zoom well, it all. But with Zooming, people are turning them off all the time. I don't you let anyone work from home when you were editing The Sun. But thank you to my brilliant panel, who will be back shortly. Still ahead.